Former casualty rescue paramedic Paul Featherstone, who spent 45 years working with New South Wales Ambulance, is surprised a search and rescue helicopter didn't go to White Island straight away. There were two choppers that actually landed on White Island about an hour after the eruption. They were able to relay the message back to Fakatani that there were casualties on the island, that there were scores of people injured. Would that not have been relevant information to the search and rescue crews to then inform them about their next point of action? Getting uh, intel like that, particularly from pilots who'd obviously flown in, and um, is you know, worth its weight in gold on those situations. But again, I don't know what other information they might have been receiving from other people. But um, to me, that if that was my mission and I was flying, going to go to it, that would make me feel a lot more comfortable than flying into something that I didn't know exactly what was going on. If you were told that there were people on the island who were still alive, what would you have done? I would be pushing very strongly to get out there and to assist. The last thing we want to happen is people to be left alone, you know, without assistance. And that's what rescuers do. They try their best to make sure that doesn't happen. So, in other words, if you could, you would pull out all the stops to save these people's lives? Oh, absolutely. Paul Featherstone became a household name after the 1997 Threadbow landslide when he found and stayed with sole survivor Stuart Diver. There's the chair, there's there the chair the going chair. up. They've suddenly realised around right. here, they know that he's out. Accidents happen every day and that's truly why we have first responders, you know, to, to cover those incidents. Years ago, uh, before Threadbow, we didn't have urban search and rescue teams, uh, which are a big thing now for searching for people underground and all sorts of things but we only had one in Australia and now we've got them everywhere and they get deployed everywhere as well. In a place like New Zealand, you know, we've got 12 active volcanoes, White Island being one of the most active. Would you expect that there'd be search and rescue crews who were capable of being sent to the scene should a disaster unfold? Um, I believe yes. You know, in, um, in Australia we trained up teams to um, do all sorts of environments and uh, I think you learn from a near miss, so I don't know if these volcanoes had been active before or they've had near misses. But if you then concentrate on that and how better to do things, then you're always improving on the way and um, you're coming up with new techniques. But I'm a big believer of the appropriate equipment being available. Um, the planning has to be you know, on top of everything. And your crews, the rescue crews themselves, they're willing to do that sort of work, but they need the right training and the right equipment to do that safely. Rescuers themselves, you've got to remember that they need to be safe, but also that you can stretch the envelope if you have appropriate training and appropriate equipment to do the assessment. And then even if you do get there, you may have to turn around if it's that bad. Given your history in Australia, you know, your knowledge of dealing with disasters, if this had happened in Australia, if Australia was the country that had 12 active volcanoes that tourists were encouraged to visit, what would we have done here? What would search and rescue crews have been deployed to do? Uh, we'd be aware of the situations. We would train up, um, I guess, small groups, well trained, and um, to handle those environments, equip them and uh, and if you have a near miss, as I said before, they're the best ways of learning, you know, because no one's been injured, but you realise what can happen. And you always go, and, and in the special casualty access team we used to do, we used to review and debrief missions so we could hopefully do them better, because no one's perfect in this world. But if you're striving to do the best you can, then uh, you get closer to achieving your goals. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.